Hi guys, welcome back to Crossfader. Just a quick video today on about how to set up a controller with a professional mixer in a club environment. We're back at the Space Nightclub in Leeds and we're going to show you how to set this up if you're not plugging in the XLRs. Now plugging in XLRs into a controller like the SX3 is probably the easiest way to do it. But in a club like this, you may need to be to an AV tech, you need the amps to be turned off before you start unplugging uh, the connections that directly take the sound from the mixer to the amps to avoid any issues with speakers popping and things like that. So what we're gonna do today is show you how to plug in a controller into a spare channel on a professional mixer and how to set up your gain structure so you don't lose any sound quality in the procedure. Let's get into it. First of all, we're gonna to want to plug in the controller to the mixer. Now we're gonna do this using RCA cables. These are unbalanced cables and, and they're fine for short runs just like this. So we'll plug this into the master out. Make sure you're not plugging it into a record out or any or a booth out or anything like that if your controller has such a thing. These need to go into your master out. From here, we want to plug the, the other two into a spare channel onto the line level. Make sure you don't plug them into the phono. From here, we now want to set the uh, input knob on this channel that I've plugged into to line. At this point, we want to plug in the controller to the computer. This could be done earlier, to be fair. There's no real time constraint on this one. And launch our software. Right, now we've plugged everything in and we're ready to get started. Load a track into one of your decks. Make sure that your gain knob on your channel that you're gonna play, press play on, is turned all the way to the, to the bottom, and your master level out is as well. We also recommend that you turn down the gain knob here. Start playing your track, lift up the fader, and you'll be able to see, as I turn up the trim, we can see on the VU meter, we're starting to get the green and orange LEDs. It's important when we're using this system, because we've got two methods of amplification, we've got two different trim knobs that we can be messing with, uh, well, four potentially when you add in the masters, that we don't end up with any redlining or uh, unbalanced gain structure. So we're gonna lift this into the mids, which would be just a few orange blocks, make sure you know any of the red, and then start to lift the master volume on the controller. Again, what we're looking for here is that we just stain the greens and the yellows. We don't want no reds. Now we can lift the channel on our mixer and again start to lift the knob here. There we have it. By setting up this way and making sure that there's no reds on your initial channel where we can amplify the trim, there's no reds from the master out, where again, we've got a trim control for the volume. That way, the sound received by the mixer, which has been set up with the club, you know, this, this is a club's mixer, it's been set up, they know how to work the sound system around this mixer. We know that this signal will act no differently than one that we're playing with maybe from a CDJ. Now, if you go down and turn this down and turn these up, so these are all in the reds, you're gonna end up with really bad, unwanted uh, distortion and it may not be visible to you that you've got this because you'll be concentrating on two things at once. Make sure your gain structure is set up properly. Keep these in the oranges. Keep this so it's just out of the red and you'll have a great time. We hope this tip's been helpful for you. Give us a thumbs up if it has. Subscribe and if you wouldn't mind sharing this with your friends, that'd be great as well. And we'll see you in another video very shortly.